I want to address um, something that we've touched upon, and I know a lot of people in the chat have been asking about, which is with these variants, the variants of concern that we've been hearing about in the news, um, especially uh, this year, and how that might affect immunity. Um, Dr. Gomerman, I'm wondering if you could touch on that in, in what we know so far about um, immunity from the vaccines in the context of the variants. Sure. So first of all, um, what a variant of concern is, is um, a form of the virus that's acquired a uh, mutation, but actually usually a, a collection of mutations that confers an advantage for the virus in um, potentially in, in infecting the host or in overcoming uh, pre-existing immunity to the virus, whether that pre-existing immunity was acquired through infection or through vaccination. And because we've had um, 125 million infections, and like I said, probably that's an underestimate, the virus has had lots of chances to potentially make these variants. So it's kind of a numbers game. And so this was expected, maybe not as soon as we saw it, but it, it is um, what we would expect a virus would do. Um, now, the thing that we worry about is whether the variants can overcome the immune response that has already been generated, as I said, either in response to infection or in response to vaccination. And so far, um, so for example, the B117 variant, which was first noted in the UK and is now the dominant variant in Ontario, um, pre-immunity to the virus is, is, not, is still able to neutralize that variant. So um, that variant doesn't seem to have evaded our pre-existing immunity. The South African variant B351, uh, 1351, is, um, has a, a somewhat uh, larger effect, but I just want to uh, really emphasize that the easiest thing, these, the best tool we have to, to measure whether our pre-existing immunity is effective or not is to look at those antibodies that I was telling you about, particularly the neutralizing antibodies. And when you're vaccinated, you make a crap ton of those antibodies. Like the antibody levels are so high that when we hear about, oh, this has actually, um, you need a bit more neutralizing antibody to deal with the B1351 variant, we'll consider that you're already really high. And so that's something that to keep in mind. And secondly, a recent uh, publication has come out that has shown that the T cell response to these variants is actually okay. And that's why I really wanted to get across to you in my talk that it's not just antibodies. The immune system is sort of like a Swiss army knife and it has all sorts of different ways of uh, dealing with a threat. And so um, thus far, the vaccines are, um, are, are gonna be um, okay against some of the variants that have been tested, although more testing is required. For example, we don't know as much about the Brazilian variant. But when, um, when Dr. Richardson and Dr. Sharma say that the best vaccine is the one that you can get, that is a good reason to get vaccinated tout suite because um, the sooner we achieve herd immunity, the uh, quicker we can slow down this cycle of variant generation within the population. Um, so at the moment, our variants are concerning, but they're not deal breakers for the vaccines. And out of an abundance of caution, um, vaccine companies are now pivoting to make new vaccinations against, uh, for example, the B1351 variant. And I'm not sure what the future will hold. Uh, we, you know, we get flu vaccines every year because different forms of influenza emerge uh, seasonally. Whether we would need uh, different coronavirus vaccines um, in the future is something um, you know we're watching and we're we're, we're thinking about moving forward.